Flashcards are 1000% my go-to revision material, and along with past papers, they're the only revision material I use, and how I get consistently high grades. In this video, I'll be showing you the best method to learning with flashcards, and how they will 100% improve and increase your grade. Keep watching to find out more. Before I get into this video, please check out my second channel version 2. I recently uploaded a room makeover video and it shows my room's transformation because as you can see there have been a few changes up in the lights and a few of the things have moved around. So for anyone interested, the link will be in the description below. So back to this video. Long ago in year 7 and 8, now that seems like ages away, I used to make all my flashcards by hand and they got me through quite a few tests, got me some good grades, but they were a pain to make every single time I had to revise. That's when I discovered Anki. If you don't know what Anki is, Anki is this online app and website that makes and helps you make flashcards along with an active recall algorithm. And I find it to be so much better than Quizlet to revise with flashcards. If you're wondering what active recall is or even space repetition as some people call it, it's this amazing technique that's proven to increase grades. It helps you come back to things days later, weeks later, even months later and then eventually puts it into your long-term memory, increasing the chances of you remembering it down the line when you're doing an important test. That's why I 1000% recommend Anki because it uses this active recall algorithm and maybe I'll make a whole video talking about active recall and how it's such a good revision method because there are other things to use with active recall apart from flashcards. But yeah, let me know if you'd like that video. I'm now gonna show you Anki and how I've made my flashcards. So I'm gonna shrink into the corner in three, two, one. As you can see one of the first things that appear are the sets that I've created. These may look like a lot but they really are just the topics we're going to do for GCSE so not too many. And as you can see apart from triple science I, the only other flashcards I have are French and history and the reason for this is because I don't really think that subjects such as English and maths are suited to flashcards, rather practice I think is a better way to go through and revise them. And that's what I try to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how Anki works. So as I've just said, this is the start screen and for the start screen over here I have uh, all the sets that I've created and then from the start screen you can do a multitude of things. So there's this question that takes you to their site, then there's this which takes you to a graph and calendar kind of review of how you have been doing with these flashcards. Then there is this uh, search, which shows you every single flashcard in the set that you've selected. Then at last, there's this uh, cog that shows you syncing, review, editing, things like that, just general uh, app things. So now let's click on a set and see something in depth. Okay, so if I click on B1, because that's just the closest, and I go on the small, you can see over here I have quite a lot of B1 flashcards and these I all created using the CDP revision guide and uh, notes we did in school because I created these alongside us learning. Okay, so you can see every single thing that is in B1 I have written in here. And now let's go into one flashcard. So as you can see, I have the front, which is a question. So what is the process of diffusion? Then the second or the back, which is the answer, essentially what I would have to say to get a good mark or a few marks for a question like this. So diffusion is the gradual movement of particles, blah, 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 blah. Then Anki also has this amazing feature where you can add diagrams and pictures and photos just to help you with uh, your revision, something that would be harder to do with uh, writing handwriting flashcards. So I'm also gonna show you one other thing in this area. So if I filter, you can see that uh, Apart from the general whole collection current deck filters, there are many more. So if I scroll, you can see there are the deck filters and then there are tags. So what tags are, tags are another really cool feature of Anki apart from Active Recall. They help group all your flashcards into one and apart from sets, they make them very easy to find again. So as you can see, I have tags with a lot of things, numbers, waves. So I have acceleration, adjectives for, I don't know, I think for French and German. And then I have the Bs, B1 to 9. Then I have other things such as black body radiation. And I think I probably have ev mostly every single letter apart from X and Z or something. But these are all the tags I have. And it's very easy because now when I press one, so let's press all the flashcards I have for B4. So let's click on something that's more specified. So if I click on alleles, then you can see that I have five flashcards that refer to alleles. So whenever I have to revise something to do with alleles, these five flashcards will be useful to revise with. 
So these, as you can see, are very simple, probably two lines, one line, maybe three lines at max. Not a lot going on with those. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is show you my process of how I create Anki flashcards. So the first thing I would do is click on the relevant topic or section that I'm making flashcards on. So let's pretend I'm making flashcards for Matter, which I do have to do after this video. So yeah, S7 Matter. As you can see right now, it says, congratulations, you finished this deck for now. That's just because it's the default kind of screen you see before making any cards. So over here, I have my GCSE physics textbook or revision guide, and then let's go all the way to matter. So over here, I have matter, it starts off with density. Sorry, this is quite a bit bright. So what I would normally do is with density, I would write down everything important. Not everything in the textbook is relevant though, so only the really key important facts that are useful to revise. That's another key thing you should do when creating Anki flashcards. Not write everything down, so not write this whole paragraph down because that's not all useful. And if you have any keyboard kind of things that you can use as a shorthand, such as an equal sign, equal arrow, or some types of arrows, for example, that will definitely help with your creating flashcards. So now let's click add. So as you can see, it's front, back, tags. So I've mostly been using basic, but you can do many other basic and reverse card, optional reverse, type and answer and close. I don't know enough about these to explain them to you guys. So let's just click back onto basic. So let's say for GCSE, so for the front, I would say a very basic thing like, what is density? This is what I'll see when I'm going through the flashcards. Then the back is just like a normal flashcard, the answer. So instead of writing everything now, I'm just gonna write answer. Then what I would do is with these tags I have, what I would do is, this is my default. So I normally add the topic. So it's S7 and then I would add the key topic header of that page. This is my basic format to creating flashcards on Anki and how I create them. Let's go on to topic five for GCSE chemistry. These only have two because I still have yet to make these. Now let's go on the first one and then as you can see, this is how essentially I have made my flashcard. So I have the question, how do temperature and pressure affect the harbor process? Then I have basic information. Then I have a short diagram or a small diagram, I mean, that can help me with that. And then I have my two tags, T5 and the harbor process, easier and helpful for whenever I have to get back to this. The last thing that's kind of significant in Anki is the with the active recall. Yeah, as you go through a deck, they'll have many kind of things or graphs and pie charts to show you relating to how much revision you have been doing. So let's go on to B1, the one I've done the most probably. Uh, you can see that before uh, the number of featured views, reviews I have used, so you can see my graph and then there's a scale here. I haven't really known how to read every single one of these, but I'm sure they're important. I like this one though, the calendar one, it tells you how much I've revised and also shows you how many reviews I did. So you can see that with card counts, I have new, relearning, learning, young, mature, suspended. Most of them are mature because mature meaning I've already done these quite a lot because I really did spend a long time on the B1 because it's such a big topic. Then I have review intervals, how long I spent until doing the review again. Flashcard over, so practical, how can you investigate osmosis? You can see I have the answer and then a page that kind of shows the experiment. And then I have four buttons underneath, so again, hard, good and easy. So you can see they have different time intervals, 10 minutes, 1.9 months, 4.2 months and 7.1 months. I haven't done all these topics in school, so for B7 to B9, we actually are yet to do that and I still have to do that with my teacher. But I've already created flashcards on it just because I want to have a head start for year 11. Uh, yeah, apart from that, there's nothing really else that I can talk about with Anki. And I think this video is long enough as it is. Hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. If I also think I've missed anything or I come back to something that maybe is interesting enough for me to make a follow-up video, I will do that maybe in the near future, maybe in the far future, who knows. But yeah, let me know if you'd like to see that as well. Once again, please, please check out my second channel version two. As I said before, I recently posted the room makeover and it would mean a lot to me if you can go and watch it or maybe even subscribe if you'd like to. And yeah, keep your notifications on if you do subscribe because I'll be posting a lot more on that channel and it will be things apart from studying to show you that studying is not all that I do. Once again, thanks so much for watching this video and please like, share, comment and subscribe. If there's anything else you'd like to know about Anki, leave a comment down below and I'll see you all next week with a new brand new video. Bye.